All right, YouTube, today I'm gonna show you how to graph the position, velocity, and acceleration of a car which is accelerating from rest at two meters per second squared for 10 seconds. Now I'm gonna explain how to do this just using algebra and some basic physics concepts. But if you're going through and doing physics with calculus in it, I'm gonna drop a few calc notes down here as we go, just to help you understand how derivatives and integrals fit into this problem. Now, before we start tackling the actual problem up here, I wanna relate these three quantities to one another. Now you may remember position and velocity are related through this equation, which tells us that velocity is equal to the change in position or displacement over a change in time. And velocity and acceleration are related through this equation, which tells us that an acceleration produces a change in velocity over some change in time. Now, according to the problem, acceleration is a constant two meters per second squared. So in our acceleration versus time graph, we're gonna see a constant line with a value of two. Now, moving on to velocity, you'll see in our problem, our car starts from rest, meaning the initial velocity at a time of zero is gonna be zero. Now, as time goes on, that velocity is gonna change and to understand how it's gonna change, let's look over here at acceleration. You see, an acceleration of two meters per second squared means that with every second that goes by, there's gonna be a change in velocity of two meters per second. So after one second, the velocity is gonna be two meters per second. And after two seconds, the velocity is gonna be four meters per second. And with every second that goes on, that velocity is gonna increase by another two meters per second. So after 10 seconds, we'll see the car is actually traveling at 20 meters per second. Now there's a couple of really important key ideas regarding the relationship between these two graphs, and they center around this equation right here. You see, this equation can be viewed as slope equals rise over run, ultimately meaning that the value of acceleration is equal to the slope of our velocity versus time graph. And there's another relationship here that we'll see a little bit more clearly if we rearrange this equation. You see, rearranging this for velocity, we get the change in velocity is equal to acceleration multiplied by change in time. And just like we applied this equation over here, looking at the equation this way over here, you'll notice this line here is, is showing us the acceleration in our equation. And of course, time is on the x-axis here. So that's our change in time. So multiplying our acceleration by our change in time will get us change in velocity. If you look at this as though this is a rectangle, what we really have is base multiplied by height, meaning the area under the curve of acceleration versus time is equal to the change in velocity. Now moving on to position. Since we weren't given an initial position anywhere in our problem, we're just gonna assume the car starts at a position of zero. But after that, things get pretty difficult really quick. And the issue is, what do we draw here? But I wanna go back to our velocity versus time graph. You see the slope on our velocity versus time graph was acceleration. And that's because acceleration made a change in velocity over a change in time. And much in the same way, our velocity is gonna produce a change in position over a change in time. Ultimately, what that's telling us is the slope of our position versus time curve is equal to the value of velocity. So if we start with very little velocity and finish with a large velocity, we're gonna start with zero or very little slope, and this line is gonna get steeper and steeper. Now I worked out this problem ahead of time, so I've already got numbers over here on our y-axis, but let me show you where these come from. See, just like when we rearrange this equation for the change in velocity, let's rearrange this equation for our change in position or displacement. See, ultimately what this is telling us is that the displacement is equal to velocity multiplied by time, or really the area under the curve of our velocity versus time graph. So calculating out the area of this triangle will give us displacement. Now the area of a triangle is given by one half base times height. So our displacement's gonna equal one half multiplied by the base, that's 10 seconds, multiplied by the height, that's 20 meters per second. And we get a total displacement from start to finish 
of 100 meters. And you'll notice here, our units of seconds times meters per second cancel out, giving us displacement that is in fact measured in meters. Now I often get the question, what does the area under the curve of a position versus time graph mean? And ultimately, it doesn't mean anything. There's nothing else over here that we can graph. But on a similar note, if you really want to nerd it up, the slope of an acceleration versus time graph is what we call jerk. But that's not really something we need to worry about in an introductory physics course. So this has been how to graph the position, velocity, and acceleration of an object accelerating from rest. And on that note, that's all for now.